time to get rid of that light. Today, you must go. Today I decided to change the brakes, finally. Long overdue. I know many of my videos you guys seen that brake light on and that's because my rear brake lights were not changed and now I'm gonna go ahead and change them, so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You gotta take a look in here. You can see, it's pretty filthy. I'm getting a slight clinging sound. Let's see. Let's see what that is. Uh, everything looks good back here. As long as that diff, as long as that diff stays where it needs to be, and the wheel stays on tight, I think I'm good to go. But. We're gonna be changing the brakes. Look at the brake pads. Yeah, they're pretty much shot, and this rotor has a real pronounced lip on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. Got my H8 with my half inch socket. It's $1,400 in your hand. I would never do that. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Yo, the mosquitoes is really bugging out. You could have told me that you pressed record already. I did, I said it's recording. That means I pressed After. <laughs> is this for YouTube? Is this for YouTube? I don't know you. Yeah, niggas pick up a camera and think y'all fucking... Cameraman. Ex expert. Director X. Uh, um, ex <laughs> executive producers. <laughs> Damn. You, think you like this one better or you like better? I like that better. Obviously. You know what this feels like I'm holding? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh my god. People on YouTube know what kind of person you are. You think I'm joking? What? Make sure you watch this video. Of course. I got my I got it subscribed and everything. You're gonna be like Oh, I don't have no paste. A little no lubricant? Paste in here, boy. You mean lubricant? She's you sick. think I should put it on without paste? Or you think it's dumb? I don't think that's dumb. Gotta change those struts. I think this is good. I'm wrapping this with electrical tape so I don't damage the rotor when I push the caliper back. Well, when I push the piston back. Go right up here. This is gonna push in the pin. Grab the back. Make sure you apply pressure on that first. 
And this should just come right out. Now, just like that, just like that, the pads are ready to slide out. Boom. That's the pad that I took out. Look in here, these are the four pistons. Two pistons on this side, two pistons on the other side. Fit a bottom one in, bottom pin in while I'm down here. That's in. Now off the top. You gotta do it a little, a little tricky because. I need to apply pressure on this and slide. All right, holding tight. So the brakes are done. Now by no means were the back brakes a DIY. I mean, not even the front brakes as much. You could watch it, kind of get a hint. Oh, it started to be a DIY, but yeah, whatever. It just turned out that way. Figure I'd just throw it up there for you guys anyway. But the brakes are on. And I'll put a link down below where I got these brakes from. They are FC Piero Acabono, A-K-E B-O-N-O, the European ceramic brakes. I have a couple of things to say about them. Now, I changed the rears first, chilled out for a little bit before I changed the fronts because I didn't have enough time. Got the car washed right after that and no brake dust until I changed the fronts. Like for like almost like a whole week, there was no brake dust whatsoever. Fronts dusted up in about no time. I give it about two days and the front wheels were completely dusted up thanks to those OEM MW brakes. That is the number one reason why I changed the pads. In my opinion, I could get a better pad and a better rotor. I'd rather look at like something like a big brake kit or something like that. Or at least upgrade to the 370 millimeter fronts instead of the 345 millimeters that I have as far as caliber wise and rotor wise. So I figure for the time being or until I figure out what I'm gonna do with myself in this car, I'll just go ahead and throw something on that one. It does not dust crazy and two either performs better or just like OEM. I've been stopping good enough now, so I figure, hey, listen, it's not, it's not a big deal. However, I was kind of wrong because those brake pads from the Akibono, the initial bite is a little sharper than the OEM ones, but I feel like high speed braking, these ones heat up a little bit better. I don't feel as much confidence in braking. Could need to brake in the brakes, but I think I've already done that. And I just don't feel that that crazy bite and that may be a trade-off from just uh, less dust. It's not a trade-off that I like. I'll keep on driving on these. Hopefully they'll get better. If they do get better, obviously I'll keep them, but I can't really keep brakes on this car that I really not a fan of because the fact that how I drive, I need to be able to stop when I need to stop and when I want to stop as well. So I'll report back to you guys and let you guys know how these brakes are holding up. But OEM wise, if you're doing a normal driving and even some high speed moving and things like that, you should be good. But track wise, I don't think these brakes are where it's at as far as track wise and driving like a complete maniac. I don't know if I would recommend these brakes like that. They're good OEM brake, but the OEM brakes had a better, I guess, uh, 
fade, like the fade of these brakes, they seem to fade out a lot quicker. I don't know, could be me, but that's what I got. That's how I report to you guys. And you could also see another little clip. I fixed my front lip. I'm trying to fix my front lip because that bump took it out. If you guys follow my Instagram, you'll see. So basically I'm trying to fix it in that. Whew. Uh, if you guys follow my Instagram, you'll be able to tell a couple days back or a couple weeks back or whatever, I tried to make it up a steep curb and surprisingly my car was low to make it up. And I damaged the front lip. Well, I kind of bent the front lip down. It's flexible material. I'll show you guys in a second. And I bent that down and pretty much thought it was an easy fix and it kind of pulled the bumper down a little bit with it as well so what i went ahead and did was i kind of went up under there and inspected the damage it completely ripped all the paint off underneath there it's really nasty really nasty but i kind of you know uh, unscrewed it rigged it bent it back up so that when you look at it it looks perfectly fine just when you go underneath you do a little digging you'll see exactly where it's screwed up at but it looks perfectly fine from the outside now. Like I said, I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, a couple other things, the 3,000 subscriber giveaway. We are running up close to the 3,000 subscribers, so I will be giving away that GoPro. Stay tuned, subscribe, lock it in for a chance to win that GoPro. Hey, the old brake dust is still up there. RIP, Bush Steiner wheel. But you, I mean, you can see right here, these are the new brake pads. I kind of beat it in. I had to beat the little pins out so I kind of scratched it up a tad bit I will be getting it clean just not now because obviously it's raining outside and this right here is where I damaged my front lip if you take a look at it it's very flexible cheap material so kind of just this is still a little screwed up but it's flexible so it doesn't get destroyed like the carbon fiber pieces uh, however I end up ripping the bumper. And if you guys look, I'll show you a piece of that on the bottom. You can tell the backs. Look at this. This is all you got. And it doesn't even look. It's hard to even notice it compared to the front. And this is, like I said, two days worth of dirt. Take the same finger. It's like night and day if you see it. So. Hey, look at that. This is my favorite part of this car. How the back kind of comes out a little fatter than the, the car. It looks dope, the tire. That's like one of my favorite parts of this car. The way the tires look. They kind of had that really aggressive stance. They all cambered all around. The backs are, I think, about a negative two. The fronts are, I think, about a negative one to two. I do not know the answer to that. I should because this, the alignment sheet showed me, but I forgot. Anyway, super dope. Looks cambered out. Now, that will chew in the inside of the tires just a tad bit more, but I don't know. Some things, some things you just got to do. And performance-wise, Cambering all of these wheels really does help a lot. The rears have already been cambered. On all of my BMWs, the rears have been cambered. On many of you guys' BMWs, the rears are cambered. It's kind of why the one that's kind of one of the reasons why the rears chew out faster than the fronts. However, I cambered the front wheels on these. If you have not seen that video, just look through all my videos until you find it. It's the M3, M4 lower and control arm video. I appreciate you guys. I love to see and hear from you guys. Believe it or not, I really do. If you guys see me in traffic, if you see me out in person, go ahead, give me a beep or say what's up, something like that. Because, I mean, I notice you guys. I know when you guys see me. Most of you guys do it already. Like that guy. Um, definitely DM me. I ran into this guy. He had a white 335 with roof racks on it with a, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't an M-Sword package. I remember that much because we were talking about the front lip. But, yo, go ahead, hit me up on Instagram, underscore slow speed. I love connecting with you guys. Love meeting all you guys. Didn't get a long time to talk to you because I guess he was just running around or whatever. A lot of cars going on the place. But yo, definitely DM me. Uh, I'll talk to you more about that front lip. If you're still looking for one, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure if you were or not, but if you're still, if you're looking for one, definitely hit me up, underscore slow speed. 
Um, I point you in the right direction of that one. Like I said, I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys. I actually run into a lot more people than I thought I would. YouTube is such a huge platform. I'm thinking like a lot of my subscribers or a lot of you slow speeders out there. That's pretty much my subscriber base, the slow speeders. A lot of you slow speeders out there, I'm thinking you guys are in like Hong Kong or freaking Texas or something crazy. But a lot of you guys are right here on the East Coast. Seriously, you know, um, I'm always in either the Maryland or New York area like always and that's pretty much where most of you guys are at a lot of you guys are in maryland and in new york and somewhere in between and it's kind of crazy that i'll always run into you guys you know it's kind of it's kind of weird to grasp the fact that i have 2500 subscribers you know that's nothing compared to a lot of people but 2500 subscribers and i and i run into a lot of them well i'm pretty sure not the whole 2500 not even the whole 2000 but a lot for me you know, it's my first shot at doing all the social media stuff. I really haven't had like Instagram and all other stuff before this. So seeing how the platform works and, you know, giving you guys advice and taking you some and taking some of you guys advice this is really awesome. And I thank you guys a lot. Definitely, def, definitely stay tuned. I got some big things coming for this car. But first that dyno, because I really have to really, really, really have to prove to you guys this car puts out 400 wheel. I know it's hard to prove it to you but I know it does. And we might be talking about um, <clears throat> dyno jet numbers because Mustang dyno, I don't know if I could pull a 400 wheel on Mustang dyno. Dyno jet, I'm pretty confident in it, but whatever dyno we get, we'll go ahead and do it and throw it and I'll make up all my crappy bullshit excuses then. Mike from Slow Speed, I might do a little bit of a little Speedy Gonzalez pull. I'm out of here.